Well, one of the things that last song helps us rehearse is that part of what it means to live into the newness of what God is doing through Jesus Christ is to recognize that we have been accepted by God before the throne of God above. I am welcome. We are welcome. God sees us as acceptable through Jesus Christ, welcome in his presence. That's quite something. We spend a lot of time thinking about whether or not we are accepted. Do I have the right look? Am I wearing the right clothes? Do I have the right letters behind my name? Do I have the right talent? Do the right groups of people welcome me into their midst? Am I accepted? Maybe that's only outward anxiety of the anxiety that we feel on the inside. Uh, knowing that we're not worthy of acceptance at some level. That's the problem with sin. When we turn away from God, when we fail to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, when we disregard our neighbor and do not love our neighbors as ourselves, that weighs in on us. We know we have done wrong. We know we have not lived up to the fullness of our humanity. And we know deep within us that on our own, we are not acceptable before God. So we strive to be accepted by others, thinking that maybe that will calm some of that anxiety. If we're accepted by others, then maybe that will be enough, except it never is. And yet here comes the good news of the, the gospel, the announcement that through Jesus Christ, his pouring out of his life for us, the perfect spotless lamb laying down his life for us, our sins have been forgiven. God claims us as his children, as his beloved sons and daughters, and welcomes us back into the fold and says, I am so glad you are here. You are accepted. That is stunning newness in a world that judges one another on merit, on look, on accomplishment, or by putting oneself above others, playing the comparison game. But we're accepted by God, which frees us from having to compare ourselves with others, thinking, well, at least I'm not like that person. Jesus tells a parable about that. The, the Pharisee saying, thank you, God, that I'm not like that sinner. We don't have to play that game. We don't have to prove ourselves by comparing ourselves with somebody we deem to be a worse sinner than we are. It's none of our business. We don't have to worry about that. We're freed from that kind of judgment and that comparison game. It then frees us to come before God honestly and to say, God, I have sinned. I, I'm not pleased with what I've done in the past, and I know you're doing your new thing in me. God, what new thing would you continue to do in me? God, show me what it is that you are renewing within me. Show me what you would want me to put to death so that I might take on the newness of Jesus Christ more and more. Maybe that's something you might seek to pursue in this week, in conversation with God. God, what would you do within me? What would you have me put to death? How would you have me spend my time? How do you want me to use these resources? What do you think of my character? What new habits do you want me to cultivate so that your virtues might be alive in me and on display for all to see and to bless? Maybe have that conversation with God. And as you do, be sure that as that song we just sang speaks, we're welcoming God's presence. So let's come before God together now in prayer. Oh God, our Father in heaven, the Lord God Almighty, we praise you, for you are the all-powerful creator, and we give you unending thanks for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, into this world to save us from our sin, so that through him we might receive forgiveness, so that in him we might see your power at work to heal, to restore, to bless. And we thank you that Following his death, we see your work, your power at work in him as you raised him from the dead, 
showing us your power over death and signaling to us your sure intention to one day make all things new. We give you thanks that in the midst of a world marked by so much weariness, we have this to hold on to, that you hold us through Jesus Christ and assure us of your promises and assuring us of the fact that you are for us and not against us. So we give you thanks, O God. We give you thanks that you have seen fit to welcome us back into your fold, that you welcome us into your presence through Jesus Christ as your forgiven sons and daughters. Help us to live with a deep assurance that you are well pleased with us on account of Jesus Christ, that we have no reason to worry or to question your love for us. And so free us from any temptation we might have to find our acceptance or worth anywhere else. Free us from how easy it can be to compare ourselves with one another. Free us, O oh God, to find your presence to be gracious and that you are for us as you seek to conform us to the ways of Jesus Christ. So thank you for your insistence to bring about in us the fullness of life that you intended from the very beginning. And thank you that as you, as you do that good work in us, you're gentle with us, patient, loving, and kind. So thank you for paying us the compliment of not passing us over when, when we had sinned, but, but pursuing us. May our lives be lived in response to you for all of your goodness and your love. God, with all of that in mind, we do bring before you, though, the pain that we continue to feel, the burdens that we carry, the, the things that cause us concern. Father, this past week as a congregation, we, we marked the passing of our Loa Colleen. Just a couple of weeks ago, we received word that she'd suffered another stroke. And that grieved us, and we prayed fervently for her that, that you would renew her strength, that you would allow her to return home with Bill, but, but that was not in your plan. And instead, you've called her out of her earthly pilgrimage, and you've called her to yourself. And in that, we rejoice, because we know that you are good, and that when you call us out of this life through Jesus Christ, we're in your presence. So we rejoice in that. And yet our hearts ache, for we've lost another dear member that we've loved. And so we pray that we would know of your comfort and your consolation. And we pray of this especially on behalf of Bill and Shannon and Gary and Mark and their family. Lord, draw near to them at this time. Be their comfort, their guide and their friend, their shepherd. Father, we continue to live amidst unrest, uncertainty. There's tensions brewing all around us. Sometimes that unsettles us, and we're not exactly sure how we are to respond. What are we to think of this? What, we, what sense do we make of that report? How do we make plans for the future? How do we, how do we live as your people in the midst of a, a society marked by tension and unrest? How do, we, how, do we people, how do we be people that bring the good news of the gospel of reconciliation? And, and how do we live as makers of peace as Jesus commissions us to live? So today, O oh God, again, we bring before you the, the cries of this world, cries that have been brought about by the spread of COVID-19 and all of the hardships that have come along with it. See us through this season, O oh God, deliver us. Bless those who are working tirelessly to treat those who are ill, to develop treatments and vaccines, to put forth good public policy that, it, that enables us to live well together, those who are planning for a school year that's very challenging to plan at this point. Lord, we, provide, we pray that you provide strength for all those who need strength, that you provide daily provisions for those who are wondering where their next meal may come from. We pray for comfort for those who are lonely, those who have lost loved ones. Lord, we're mindful, too, of those who have been affected not only by this disease, 
But on top of that, it's been complicated by the, the beginning of a hurricane season. So first it was Texas and northeast Mexico, and now it's the eastern coast of our country, and, and we anticipate the arrival of more storms. So, Father, in your mercy, we pray that you would protect those who are in the path of these storms and that you provide all that is needed. Lord, this past week, too, has brought news of the realities of war. A mass killing in Afghanistan. Explosions in Beirut. Death on such widespread levels. And we grieve this, O oh God, and we wonder how long will it be? How long will we endure this before, before you show your mercy and you return and you make all things new for good and where death no more can have any sway? So God, for those who are suffering, for those who find themselves in the midst of war-torn lands, for those who are living as refugees, for those who, who have no place to lay their head and are wondering where to go, we pray that you would provide. And in the midst of this, O oh God, we pray for your church that you strengthen us by your Spirit, that you empower us with the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, that we may persist in this world as his faithful people, bearing clear testimony to his love and to his reign. Where your church faces persecution, we pray for courage, protection, and peace. Where your church is experiencing anxiety and uncertainty, we pray for calm, for clear-headedness, for good thinking, where your church may experience some apathy, some disinterest, alive in your church again, with a clear vision of who you are and of what you are doing through Jesus Christ, so we might bring that glad testimony with us wherever we go and give evidence of what it looks like to live under his good reign. So, O oh God, we pray that you would receive our thanks and our praise and we ask again that you would hear our prayers and that you would answer them, for we bring them to you in Jesus' name. Amen.